It's been a long time since I've actually done one of these. These are one of the I else listed in, okay? This is particularly in section three. So what had happened yesterday was that I, <clears throat> I was actually coaching one of my Thai students and I told her that sometimes in, you know, I else listen in, there's going to be a paraphrasing frenzy is what I'm coining the phrase. And what does that mean? Well, normally in speaking questions, you, you know, I'm not speaking questions. I would say in section one, it's relatively easy because there's a lot of keywords that help guide you into those as well as section four. However, multiple choice, what happens is if you have three choices, they're going to mention all three choices, but it's up to you to relate the messages to one another, right? However, when it comes to A through H, it's a paraphrase and frenzy. And so what, and what's going to end up happening here, I thought this is a very, very interesting one because I was like, oh man, this is going to be really, really exciting. And we ended up going through it. And luckily, again, because she's like a low pre-intermediate level, she ended up picking it up probably around the third or fourth question. So what we have here, we're going to be going over different things that portray different paintings, okay? So what we have, if you're listening to this on Arsenio's ESL uh, podcast, we have pictures and we have descriptions, okay? Personal meanings that we can connect them with. So pictures, you're going to hear this. You're going to hear the mentions of Falcon, Fish Hawk, Kingfisher, Portrait of William Wells, Byramati, and the Portrait of Giovanni de Medici. All right, you're going to hear those particular pictures. However, when we look at the personal meetings, they're going to be totally paraphrased. There might be an extraction of a suffix, and all you hear is maybe the verb form or they're going to be entirely different meanings. And this is when you are going to have to look or listen to A through H and say to yourself, you know what? That description right here best fits this. So let's look at A, it says childhood memory. There might be something mentioned that is told, uh, same meaning, but it's paraphrased totally, but it's the same meaning. It could be an antonym too. So what you can have are totally different opposite phrases. So one thing could be the negative, but what you're looking for is the positive, okay? That's another technique that we're actually listening for. So if we go to B, it says hope for the future. C, fast movement. D, a potential threat. E, the power of color. F, the continuity of life. All right, now British English, the continuity, right? G, protection of nature, and H, a confused attitude to nature. All right, so what's going to happen here? Two people talking, and then they're going to go one after another. going to mention Falcon, and this person is going to have an interpretation, and then someone else might say something, and then that's going to be the end. You're going to have to say, okay, well, he mentioned this, but then it falls in alignment with this. So let's listen to how I compartmentalize the information and I connect it with the different things that are mentioned in A through H. Now, again, six questions. We have eight potential answer choices. That means two are not going to be used, making it a lot more difficult, right? So here we go. Let's dive in and listen very closely. One part of the project I'm unsure about is where we choose some paintings of birds and say what they mean to us. Like, I chose a painting of a falcon by Landseer. I like it because the bird's standing there with his head turned to one side, but he seems to be staring straight at you. But I can't just say it's a bit scary, can I? Hmm. You could talk about the possible danger suggested by the bird's look. Oh, okay. Oh, you can't talk about how it's scary, but the, she suggests that you could talk about the... What, what, oh my God, I forgot what it was she used as an adjective, but she said danger as in noun form, okay? Now, if we listen for, or if we heard danger, we need to look for a negative adjective or something, a negative noun that depicts danger. So again, did he mention anything about his childhood in A? No. Hope for the future? No. Fast movement? No. Threat is a noun. Danger is a noun, okay? 
Now, dangerous is an adjective, but nonetheless, we got two nouns that are very similar. She used an adjective to modify that noun, danger. I totally forgot, went right over my head. But a potential threat, D, would be the answer. Now, if we look at the rest of it, the power of color, that's more like a positive thing, right? The continuity of life, positive. Protection of nature, positive. A confused attitude to nature, these are all positive things. We're looking for something negative about the bird, and there's only one answer that is negative. But you see how they paraphrase the hell out of it. This is what you're going to have to pick up with these different types of words and the answer choices and linking them together. So now we're going to be going into fish hawk. There's a picture of a fish hawk by Audubon I like. It's swooping over the water with a fish in its talons and with great black wings which take up most of the picture. So wings. you could discuss it in relation to predators and food chains? Well, actually, I think I'll concentrate on the impression of rapid motion it gives. Right. There we go. So he suggested, okay, predator in food chains, okay? But then she said rapid motion. Rapid, fast. Motion, movement. This is what I mean by paraphrasing, people. So a lot of you out there, and I know, like, especially my Thai students, you know what I mean? They don't have a significant amount of vocabulary. So if you don't understand rapid and you don't understand motion, well, you can use process of elimination. But guess what? Right after he says, oh, yeah, okay, they're going into the next one. So you're going to have to make a decision very, very quick. And if you don't understand, like if you look at motion with movement, you could probably link them together. Rapid, you know, and again, a bird flying kind of is a little bit of a give, uh, giveaway too. In terms of motion and movement, if you don't have any of these vocabulary terms, you're going to have to figure out another way you can hurry up and link it up. So here we go. Next one. Do you know that picture of a kingfisher by Van Gogh? Okay, it's go. perching on a reed growing near a stream. Yes, it's got these beautiful blue and red and black shades. Mm -hmm. I've actually chosen it because I saw a real kingfisher once when I was little. I was out walking with my grandfather, and I've never forgotten it. Oh, so we can use a personal link? Sure. Uh personal link. She mentioned walking with her grandfather, grandfather when she was younger. However, she did mention a bunch of colors, and that is the distractor. Because when you hear all these colors, as you heard the other bird in black, and you're going to hear other subsequent ones in regards to color, you're going to be like, oh, Eve, the power of color, the power of color. The power of color, but then she went into a childhood memory, which is A, and says we could discuss a personal link. And again, she was walking with her grandfather. This is all relative to A, a childhood memory. Let's keep it going. Okay. There's a portrait called William Wells. William I can't remember the artist, William but Wells. it's a middle-aged man who's just shot a bird. And his expression and the way he's holding the bird in his hand suggests he's not sure about what he's done. To me, it's about how ambiguous people are in the way they exploit the natural world. Interesting. Mm. Two big words. Ambiguous and exploit. You may not know what, of course, exploit, exploitation, child exploitation, human trafficking. You could kind of relate those together. But again, considering that the man had shot the bird and he's looking and he's not exactly sure what he has done, that's a confused attitude to nature. He's not sure what he has done. He shot a bird, but he's not sure what he has done. So he's looking at it and he's like, oh man, what did I do? He's confused. He's confused to what he has just done. This is going back to uh, the Topol ITP. If you had watched that or heard my podcast, Teddy Roosevelt. He captured a bear, and then he was like, I'm not going to kill the bear, release the bear, right? Now, again, Teddy Roosevelt, an absolute horrible individual, uh, racist as hell. But, you know, going, you know, going back to saying, you know, when he looked at it, and he's like, oh, he's not sure what he's done, ambiguous and exploit. Now, you may not know what ambiguous is. That means open to a lot of meaning. Exploitation meaning, damn, we're exploiting different, you know, I exploited this animal by killing it, Right? Kind of like a lot of the Americans that go to the different parts of Southern, you know, the Southern African countries to kill lions, to kill things that are endangered. 
but they're not confused. They're actually very happy for killing animals, dumbasses. Okay, so let's go. We that's another story for another day. Especially the the elephants and then being you know the, the the ivory being exported to China and then not giving a damn. Okay, I'm not even gonna go there, boy. I'm so pro animal to hell with humans. Let's keep it going. All right. There's go. Gogan's picture via Matty. Vira he did Matty. it in Tahiti. It's a woman with a white bird behind her that is right. eating a lizard, and. What I'm interested in is what idea this bird refers to. Apparently, it's a reference to the never-ending cycle of existence. <laughs> wow. <laughs> never-ending cycle of existence. Bird-eating lizard. This is the antonym that I told you about. Uh, I, I can't use antonym in adjective form. I could say a, a, a antonomic, but that would make absolutely no sense. I'm just creating a word. But never-ending cycle. If you reverse that, it means the continuity of life, all right? It means the continuity of life. That means the continuation of life and as it goes on and on and on, although the birds that are around here in my neighborhood too, they come down, they eat a lot of different things, the squirrels, the frogs, the snails, we got everything around here. You guys have no idea. That's Thailand. Uh, but again, it shows the continuity. It's the, the life cycle, the never ending life cycle. That means Life is going to continue going on. The circle of life is what a lot of people would say. A lot of people, they get real sad when they see orcas uh, die from, um, oh, I don't know what Easter orcas. I forgot what they are. But, you know, so many people are sad or the lion's eating this or the lion's eating the wildebeest. But guess what? It's a never-ended cycle. It's continuity of life. It's crazy, huh? Ugh. It's like a paradox, right? You feel so bad, but you know it has to happen. You feel so bad, but it, it's got to happen. It's kind of like us. We eat a lot of things. We're like, I'm going to eat this plant. Oh, God. That's the continuity of life. So let's go into oh, Viramate. Okay, Viramate's finished. And now we're going to be going into Hiwani. I chose a portrait of a little boy, Giovanni de Medici. He's holding a tiny bird in one fist. I like the way he's holding it carefully so he doesn't hurt it. Oh, right. He's holding it carefully so he doesn't hurt it. Okay. He's holding the bird very carefully in one hand so he doesn't hurt it. What is that relative to? Is that the hope for the future? Is that the power of color? Or is that the protection of nature? Well, he's holding it carefully. He's protecting it. That's it right there right? Because he doesn't want to hurt it. He doesn't want to hurt the bird. That's why he's holding it carefully in his hand. Protection, protection of nature, holding it carefully, protection of nature, holding it carefully. That's it. People, you got to get good with your paraphrase. And if you would say, oh, Arsenio, how am I supposed to, you know, uh, get better at this? How am I supposed to do this? Or, you know, remember these words of vocabulary terms. Listen, it's all about the dialogue, really. You heard them go one after another. Falcon, fish, king, portrait, Viramati, port uh, portrait of uh, Giovanni. One by one. And those little descriptions, you're going to have to say, ooh, oh, you know what? He's holding it carefully. What does that relate to? Careful means hope? Uh, careful means the power of color? Absolutely not. Careful protection? I like that. It's like a 90 versus like a hope for the future. Future, totally different, right? He's just holding it carefully. So if you look at all of these and how I combined everything, that's it right there. So this was a very, very, uh, you know, if, if I could give you any coaching whatsoever, and again, lots of coaching out there that I've done with a lot of individuals, it's about techniques and it's about, okay, I just watched this video. Let me go practice what he just said in regards to this. Now, multiple choice questions, that are, that's going to be coming too. I am going to be creating the IELTS listening course coming up real soon. Uh, but nonetheless, that was a phenomenal 15 minutes of glory. So if you guys liked it, comment down below. Stay tuned. Follow me on Arsenio's DSL podcast, and I'll be seeing you in the next video over and out.